Okay guys, welcome to Skill Link. We are surrounded by a large number of objects and each object has its own properties. In one of our previous video, we saw different types of crystal structures that contribute to the properties of the materials. But there, we've covered only the structures of solids made of a single type of atom, in other words, pure substances. In reality, almost every object has impurities in it. Sometimes, impurities are also added to the substances intentionally for improving their properties. One such addition of impurities to other substances yields solid solution and that is what we are going to discuss today. We will be discussing what solid solutions are, why do we need to study them and the types of solid solution and the rules governing them. Let's start with what an alloy is. An alloy is a mixture of metals formed by adding a certain amount of metals called alloying metals into another metal called the base metal. This is usually done for obtaining the desired properties. For example, pure silver is anti-corrosive but it is also very soft. Adding a certain amount of copper to silver forms an alloy called sterling silver. This improves the mechanical properties without affecting its anti-corrosiveness. Alloys can be divided into two types. They are solid solutions and intermetallic compounds. A solid solution is a solid state mixture that contains two or more solutes in a solvent. A solid solution consists of a single phase throughout and the crystal structure of the solvent remains unchanged even after adding the solute. Whereas, when the crystal structure of the alloy is different from its constituents, then it is said to be an intermetallic compound. Another major difference between these two is that the composition of the intermetallic compound is fixed, whereas the composition of the constituents in a solid solution may vary. For example, a copper and nickel solid solution may contain different combinations of copper and nickel. But why do we need to study them? As mentioned, adding a metal into another changes its property. The property of the alloy changes according to the composition. Therefore, for selecting a material for a desired application, one should know the concentration of the metals which shows the required properties. Now, let's move on to see the different types of solid solutions. Based on the location occupied by the solute atoms, solid solutions are divided into two types. They are interstitial solid solutions and substitutional solid solutions. If the solute atoms occupy the interstitial space, that is the space between the solvent atoms, then the solution is said to be interstitial. On the other hand, if the solute atoms replace some solvent atoms and take their place, then it is said to be a substitutional solution. Substitutional solid solution can be further classified into two types, namely ordered solid solution and disordered solid solution. In an ordered solid solution, the solute atoms take a fixed position among the solvent atoms and are arranged in an orderly manner. Then it is said to be an ordered solid solution. This type is seen in aluminum copper solid solution where the aluminum atoms occupy the corner position and the copper atoms occupy the face centered position. If the solute atoms occupy random positions in the crystal lattice, then we call it a disordered solid solution. Most of the solid solutions are of this type. Well, that's all about the types. But do all elements form solid solutions? The elements should possess some similar properties to form solid solutions. Hume Rothery put forth a certain set of rules that state the conditions for metals to form solid solutions. First, both the solute and solvent atoms should have similar atomic radius. The difference between the radii of the atoms must be less than 15% so that they form a solid solution. Then, both the atoms have similar crystal structure which favors the formation of solid solution. Next, the electronegativities, that is, the nature of the atoms to attract electrons, should be the same. And last, they should have the same valency. Well, that's all we're going to discuss in this particular video. We'll meet up again in the next one. Until then, bye.